next part, RJ45 jacks. These are top injury jacks made for a standard network cable. Notice that there are two black stabilizing pins and then eight small pins that have to be soldered in. There are two of these. They snap in quite easily. You can flip them over without, over without a whole lot of work. First thing you do, try to get the first four pins. You'll feel them kind of wiggle. Once you know that the pins are in, you can look over on the other side and make sure they're all there. You should be able to snap the plastic bits in. Yeah, all the pins came through. There you go. You can see all the individual pins. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other one. We've got the same oblong, oblong holes or pads here for these. More to the things that we had talked to the designers about doing because these pins are so small you try to rework, I mean, rework one even once and the pads where it would not survive. There's no need to worry about trying to position these. The, the little stabilizing bits of plastic there do a very good job. These heat up quite quickly so soldering is just a matter of a few seconds per pin. Except for that wagon wheel. And reheat those two wagon wheels one final time just to do a little quick QC check on them. Make sure you haven't skipped a pin. Very easy to miss one of these. Flip it back over. We'll go back to our little uh, overall view of where we are with the board. The next are our triax. 16 of these, one for every channel. These take some time. Why do they take time? Well, it's a whole bunch of metal going back in again and takes a while to get all that metal heated up. These are polarity sensitive. Let's so prop the board up here, give you a, a close up view of where the triax go. There we go. Notice this very double thick line right here. That matches the tab, this part of the triac. So it would be inserted as so. Now one word of note, you're gonna watch me put a bunch of these in at one time. One of the easier ways of doing this, if you actually have the heat sinks uh, and you're actually using heat sinks for the triax, is to mount the triax to the heat sink first and then use that heat sink as a support for getting all these lined up and even. Don't you're not using the heat sinks as of yet for this kit, so uh, they are available as options. I will need my handy dandy pencil box cover here and we're going to flip everything over now one thing we are going to do here is we're going to solder in a single pin for each one of these so that we can verify the alignment for each individual one All right, that's one pin on each triac. Back out so you can see how all over the place they are. This is quite normal. Notice I can actually bend these a bit forward and backwards without having to worry about reheating. In fact, let, let's go ahead and just bend these out. And let's see if we can straighten these without having to do anything. And the reason I say this is the design of this board and the manufacture of it is cleaner than most I've seen. There's not a lot of a slop and the pins fit very, very nicely. Okay. All lined up. Look at it across the top. I guess we could make a little minor adjustment here down just a touch on these. 
we'll turn these over we'll solder the rest of these pins in Watch this and put my hand over the top. These uh, things are flying around so much. I'm afraid of getting one in my eye. Now we're going to go back to those two pesky little electrolytic capacitors that we cut off the top of our roll in uh, the very beginning. If you go by height, this one here would have probably have went in before the triax, but given that these are acts are radial parts and you can just spread the leads like you do an LED, it's not really hard to do. This is the big one, taller than any other part on the board, except for the transformer, which is last. So this one here is a 220 microfarad capacitor. I'm going to show you where it goes. It goes right here. Notice next to it, there's a small plus sign right there. When you look at the capacitor, that band of color you see right there is always negative. So the long lead is positive, the short lead is negative. So we're gonna put the long lead in that hole with the plus on it. Push it all the way in. In fact, it's actually quite stout this time. Spread the leads apart. And we're going to do the same thing with the 1000 microfarad capacitor. Notice the leads on it are a bit off, so we'll straighten those up before we go in. Once again, short leg is negative. See the band? Long lead is positive. Put the long lead in the positive hole. Slide it all the way down. Until it stops, reach over, spread the leads, and solder these two in. One thing I forgot to do earlier, this board is configured to do 220 or 115 volt. So what we need to do is we need to make a jumper. I'm looking for one of our, our resistor chunks here, just a small piece of wire. What are we gonna do we're going to bend it so we can cross over these two little bits here. If you are building this board for 220, we do need to know ahead of time when you order it. 
Uh, one of the things that changes, number one, you change the way you put the jumpers in, but these uh, resistors here will be a different value. So we will need to know about that when you place an order. There's one there. Let's find a, another suitable candidate. This circuit that we're jumping out here just provides the control voltage for the board. It is worth mentioning that the control voltage for this particular board, there are two, you know, we soldered our terminals in. I showed you two power input lines, one here and one here. The control voltage, if you're only going to use half the board, make sure you put your terminals here, otherwise your chips will never have any power to actually operate. Turn over, we'll solder both of these in. Just going to take a quick look over the board. This is called Make Sure You Didn't Miss Anything. Of course, if you're following the kit, uh, that makes it a whole lot easier because you know you're basically down to parts that are not soldered in. This is the transformer. I'm not sure if you can see. I'm going to try to show you the numbering on the pins for the transformer. This is pin 1, this is pin 2, pin 3, pin 4. And if you will look over here, this board is set up to handle different size transformers. This is the largest of the transformers for this series. Uh, reason being, I didn't feel like I could very well sell you a kit that didn't have the the most options associated with the transformer. This is not a part you can just easily replace and upgrade. So can be they can be desoldered and replaced. But pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four. If you lift this up, you should find that these go right into the holes. In fact, they were shipped. The kit would have been shipped to you in that manner if if you if you're following along from a, a kit you purchased at Radiant Holidays. Insert the transformer into the right holes find the corresponding holes on the other side make sure they all go in without without mangling a pin there we go I got it to wiggle in Let's see if we can show you it's sitting down flat there you go that's one side you should be able to see the rest of it from Oh, nice and comfy. These are easy enough. They, you just hold it with your hand as you flip it over. And we're going to solder these pins in. And this is actually the final bit of soldering we get to do. We're going to take a, a number one little inspector joints. These are pretty large. They're pretty easy to look at. These do protrude a bit. Wouldn't hurt if you wanted to just take them and snip them off. Don't really think it's necessary. You can certainly, uh, certainly do it if you wish. Now, this actually concludes the assembly portion of our video series. The instructions uh, found at renardplus.com go through the details of installing the chips here into their sockets and the testing associated with those including how to install jumpers and, and look at options but this this is really the basic assembly portion of the board the parts we have left over are the shunts for the headers the mounting hardware for mounting it into your case our two fuses, which we're going to go ahead and just press into our holders here. Otherwise, I'm going to lose them.